Hi guys, welcome to the first ever official public Q&A on my YouTube, on my social media, I think in total. So I asked you, ask me anything via Instagram and you sent in wonderful loads of questions and you also commented on YouTube on the post I made and today I'm going to try and answer all of them. I am going to do this. We're in the middle of moving my studio and flat and everything. So in total three different uh, spaces, two workspaces and a private home. So this is a bit of an interim situation. I hope it looks nice enough. This is acoustic paneling over there. So it's, um, it's quite fitting as I think. Yeah, let's jump in straight to the first question. A few guys asked about my birthday. So far, I think I have never posted anything about my birthday. Since my mum has died, a number of things have been happening, obviously, also inside of me and are still in progress, as you may imagine. And I decided to give a little hint. So my birthday is September the 25th, born in September as my mum is and I love autumn and I share this birthday with Dimitri Shostakovich who I also adore very much. Mm, favorite strings. Most of my strings are by Tomastic Infeld and I will link the exact combination of strings that I'm using on my violin below. I'd love to collaborate with Tomastic Infeld. Just by the way. Now oh, that is a very good question. If you want to have a say so how my recordings in general and also my albums and singles are being published, the best way to do it because I pull my Patreon on a monthly basis, I would say to join my Patreon. And if enough people want me to do something like that, I will, but at this point, if I'm honest with you, the only way I'm releasing is purely digital because it there isn't there's just not enough demand for even hard copy <coughs> CDs. So if you're interested, join my Patreon. It's just a case of if not enough people are interested in that kind of release or product I can't afford to do it unfortunately but a great question that's also something very very kind of you quite a few send in questions like how are you how have you been after your mum's died to be honest it's I think one of the most challenging times in my entire life and it's continuing to be so. Everybody deals differently with loss and grief and because we are all mortal beings, we all die. I think it concerns all of us and unfortunately in everyday life and, uh, and society, and I have been guilty of that too, it's not really something that is spoken about or mentioned or taught or prepared or really not really something that plays a part, at least where I'm living and where I've grown up in society. For the last months I've been still thinking what is good for my mama, what would she like, what's really good for her even though she has passed away. It's, it's a bit ridiculous, you know, but that's really what I've been feeling and it's only the last few weeks, especially with her birthday and my birthday, I'm only gradually starting to realize that Sometimes I need to know, start thinking what is good for me and how do I live on without her? Because my mom and me, we were extremely close. I'm her only daughter and she was also a musician and she was my absolute biggest supporter. And obviously doing what I do and, and the kind of life 
that I I had led and or the situation I find myself in and chose the kind of career path without support like that is it's hard enough as it is that's why i'm so grateful for you guys you know because you mean an enormous support to me but how do i put this i would put it like that my mom wasn't just although that sounds dreadful i mean your mom is the most important woman in your life i think regardless whether you're a daughter or son because she's given you life she was so many things to me that are obviously not replaceable and i think i'm starting to feel to kind of show or make the change visible also to the outside world not just to me inside and my family it's a certain need to want to have this change made visible if that makes any sense if you haven't experienced anything like that and i pray i so wish for you that you haven't yet it's so difficult to relate and that's the other thing i'm finding i find it difficult to relate to everyday problems i would say my perspective on what is classified as a problem has changed incredible just to such an extent i just difficult to relate and that's regarding my friends and um, other family members you know you're not who are less affected by the situation there's just this sort of gap i that's how i would describe it and i'm not sure that's gonna change maybe that's a process it's a difficult subject for me to talk about but i do like to talk about my mama and i guess she's with me if i do that so thank you for asking wow well <laughs> my friends would say you have to be a bit crazy so it takes a lot of being in a room of four walls or three walls however you want to put it being in a room and practicing and a lot of dedication and a lot of self-discipline like i would say a lot more than a sports person like somebody being a ballet dancer or highly qualified at some sort of sport tennis whatever that kind of thing so the physical aspects are not to be underestimated and ideally if you want to do it really professionally as a soloist you you need to start quite early with that but it also takes good teaching and desire i think that is something you can't be taught just the insight fire to need to perform to play and the desire to improve on an interpretation talent and there's if you like motorical may i say talent hard you know remembering notes and loving the stage so many different aspects of talent so you may have quite a lot of one and less in others and that doesn't mean you can't be a violinist it just means maybe a certain kind of job playing the violin or teaching is more suited to your character and to you know you than a, another a good teacher is very necessary however talented i would say because viol violin playing is quite complicated um diverse may i say do you think ultimately so if you if you're talented and musical and all, all the rest and you've got a good teacher then very very important is are you needing to do this so for me it was very very clear from a very young age i was going to be a violinist there's no question like it was clear and i couldn't imagine being anything else and I pitied my friends. So I remember maybe I was five or six and I had a had a friend and I asked her and 
what are you gonna be when you grow up you know and she said oh I'm not sure maybe teacher like my mom or maybe and I was I felt such pity for her I was like oh I don't want to I sure you know because she played the violin a little but I was more into it you know even at that time and I just felt awfully sorry for her which in hindsight now I think are you crazy my entire life uh, this has been quite a quite a challenge you know all that violin and and my private life has been massively affected by my whole family I mean it's not an easy option believe me that that's maybe what it takes to it takes quite a bit of sacrifice in a way that you don't feel it as a sacrifice and i think that you only get if you really you are having to do this that is really it's not really wanting it's i mean it is wanting but it's a bit stronger than want you know it's a vocation it's a, just a need yeah so i think that shouldn't be forgotten.